Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Friday, August 18th, 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Entire city forced to evacuate as Canada's wildfires get worse. U.S. will see smoky air again, and we're talking about the arson-fueled wildfires in Yellowknife. Keep calm. It's boom time. Severe storms blast the Northeast as tornadoes damage neighborhoods near Boston. Hurricane Hillary, Category 4 storm barrels towards California. The hurricane is expected to weaken, but the National Weather Service warned that the storm was expected to bring significant impacts to the desert southwest. And that is an underestimate. Hurricane Hillary could dump over a year's worth of rain on parts of the Southwest, causing flash flood warnings and other types of scenarios. It's looking like at least six or seven inches in Southern California, as well as Southern Nevada. So this is through Wednesday. So take heed as the flash floods are about to erupt. If you're in a low-lying area, please get out of Dodge. Here is the East Pacific Hurricane Hillary early track forecast. The most recent run that just got updated just moments ago. We're going to run it through for you here. Make sure we're on point. It will make landfall near San Diego in the south uh, in Southern California and move straight up towards Tahoe and make its way towards Western Idaho before it makes its way into Canada. So this is going straight up on the West Coast will not affect the Four Corners region in any significant way, but the significant amount of rain for Lake Mead may fill. Mark my words, we're going to see 20, 30, 50, maybe 100 foot uptick in uh, Lake Mead during this event, which is good news for the desert southwest, especially Nevada and eastern California. These areas are going to be taking up as much rain as they get in an entire year. Good news. Here is the updated track for Hurricane Hillary as it makes, makes its way as a major hurricane and hurricane status up through Baja and into tropical storm status in Southern California. It will be reaching Southern California in a big way by 12 p.m. Sunday, noon Sunday. The, the major effects, tropical storm winds will be hitting Southern California at that time. But in the meantime, we have several days of drenching rains on the Baja coast here. So take heed as this storm is no joke. The most impressive storm to make a track like this since 1939. There's Hillary. Maximum sustained winds at 130 miles per hour as far as the advisory 10A. Let's see if there's a new one here. No, still at 10A. So we are at looking for Hillary to make landfall sometime, I would say about 5 a.m. Monday morning near San Diego. Yeah, right near Tijuana there, right on the coastal boundary. So five, 4 or 5 a.m., on Monday morning is when that low pressure center of circulation will enter North America or the upper 48. Two rounds of hot weather expected in the next week for the center of the country. So let's take a look at the full, full forecast now. Hurricane Hillary approaching the southwest. Dangerous heat for the center of the nation. Excessive rainfall and flash flooding will be possible across the southwest this weekend as Hurricane Hillary approaches, and our prayers and thoughts go out to the people there. This moisture is also expected to track through the intermontane west into Monday, which will be our fun day. Dangerous and record-breaking heat expands across the plains and portions of the Mississippi Valley into the weekend. Critical fire weather today from the northwest into the high plains. Take a look at this heat warnings here through Iowa and the central U.S. This will dissipate in just the next 72 hours. It is a minor perturbation. 
Now on with the wildfires in Canada. Entire city forced to evacuate as Canada's wildfires get worse. Some of the worst wildfires in a decade, but it pales in comparison to the past. Don't let these climate change alarmists scare you. This is not significant as well. It is an uptick in the 10-year numbers, but not in the overall wildfire, wildfire forecasts. So... And the RM, RCMP is investigating two arson calls in Yellowknife as wildfire looms in the city's western flank. And it's confirmed tonight that the Long Lake fire in Yellowknife is arson. Has nothing to do with you, not CO2, not climate change. Just four youths charged and they have been caught on video lighting this fire. So please, don't believe the hype. It's a sequel. And the mainstream media is full of propaganda. Here is the smoke forecast in the coming days. And they are saying that this smoke is going to be heavy and maybe pushing down and inundating perhaps the northeast here. So let's take a look at this map moves forward. Here we can see the progression through the weekend. It looks like the bulk of the smoke is going to the northeast and then a heavy out probably starting Monday morning is going to push down through the northeast or the northwest and the central plains. So hopefully we get some weather up here to squelch these fires. Polar blast hits Australia and a solar hush, avoiding the stupidity of fear infected crowds. Another polar Air mass is about to sweep up from the Southern Ocean and engulf most of the Australian Southeast, which is going to be record cold temperatures. There it is. Holy macaroni. So that's going to be a cold exclamation point on the winter down there, down under. Now, solar hush. The sun is relatively quiet for the fifth day in a row as some channels have predicted a major uptick at this time. We won't say who they are. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! He said it's that guy, Ben, over at Suspicious Observers. Yeah, well, his 5.9-month uptick or whatever he's talking about is completely non-existent. Well, the guy's a lawyer, so there is that. I do digress. Seismic update. Major quakes of note today. We have a 5.4 off of southern Peru. Some other minor activity around the globe, but nothing significant affecting humanity. So that's good news. It's looking like a regular day of seismicity across the western front. Biggest quake here on the rim of fire, 5.0 in the Philippines at 115 kilometers. Not much to worry about there. Slight uptick here on the west coast, but normal by any standard. Now, Campi Falegre volcano, a super volcano in Italy. Intense earthquake swarm peaked at M3.6 today. Seismic crisis ended. It's dropping off. You can see the last seismic crisis over here. And Campi Falegre is still puffing and passing to significant Amount, so we should take heed here as this super volcano is heating up. There is going to be an eruption here in the future. When is anyone's guess? But everything is happening here. Inflation, uptick in seismicity. It's all going on. When and if this erupts, it's not going to be a VEI 6, 7, or 8, in my opinion. It will be a VEI 3 or 4. It will kill some people locally in the area, but it will be not as catastrophic as many people are claiming. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Let's take a look at some more volcanoes. My own eruption in the Philippines, uh, probably 10, 15,000 feet. Fuego to 17. We've got Semaru, Sangay, Ubaina, Sabancaya, Bagana, Manam, and others. Bagana to 25,000 feet just moments ago. Ubainas to 21. Manam to 10,000 feet, Sangay to 20,000, Sabankaya to 23, Semaru, 15,000, who knew? Now you do. Santo Huito, Fuego, Semaru, Reventador, Campi, Falegre, let's see what they have to say here. The Falegrin fields, a, sm a swarm of small earthquakes has been occurring, but that has dropped off, so whew, it's not the big one yet.
Space weather, weather news update. The sun is quiet, dropping down to the lowest level at solar max that has ever been seen, B6.3. The sun is literally shutting down at solar max. And that 5.9 or six month nonsense coming from the suspicious one is total gobbledygook. But trust me, he's not going to mention it. Neptune's disappearing clouds linked to the solar cycle. He mentioned this as facts that we are about to get hit with a solar wave. The only problem is that this article doesn't mention it. It shows an uptick in weather on Neptune every 11 years based on the solar cycle. Here you can see 1994, an uptick, quiet down, uptick in 2002, quiet down, uptick in 2015, quiet down, and we should be seeing an uptick now. But Neptune's disappearing clouds have nothing to do with some fake micronova or galactic super wave that's purportedly coming through the solar system based on a lawyer that's full of... <whistles> What's behind this weird phenomenon in the Chinese desert? Well, the suspicious observer claimed that this has to do with the waning magnetosphere and uh, the incoming galactic superwave. The only problem is he's wrong. There is no elucidation in the article to this. There is no elucidation in the article that it's weird or un abnormal. And for those of you like me that climb mountains, we've been in this situation numerous times and it's very dangerous where you're in the middle of an electric cloud that's part of a system that is an electrical system that's weather it could be very dangerous and you could explode. You could be discharged with a piece of lightning. So good news, none of these people were electrocuted. They got out of harm's way. But I've been on the top of a mountain when an electrical cloud came through. Our hair stood up, things were crackling, and it got very suspicious, in my opinion. Now the richest Americans account for 40% of all U.S. climate emissions. This is the, all the while all third world countries couldn't give up about anything we're talking about as far as climate change, and they keep burning everything they could possibly do. But the point is that these richest Americans that are screaming at you to shut off your propane stove and whatever else you're using because it's killing the planet, they are making half of the global warming gases, and they can kiss my asses. Here's the paper. Income-based U.S. household carbon footprints from 1990 to now, or 2019, offer new insights onto emission inequality and climate finance. Yeah, 99% of you that are listening to me are not these people. These are the people that are claiming that we're going to own nothing and we're going to love it. You know what? I think they can suck it because we are coming for these people as soon as the shit hits the fan. Mark my words. Now, you see urban scientists, which are charlatans and propagandists, now say that the deepening Arctic snowpack... Did you hear that? Yeah, the Arctic snowpack is getting deeper, not less, even though we're burning up. But they're saying now that the Arctic snowpack that is getting deeper is driving greenhouse gas emissions. This is how stupid humanity is. People are going to read this and say, oh yeah, there's more snow. It's so deep that the permafrost is melting. And guess what? Ben Davidson believes this garbage. Holy macaroni. Well, you want to learn about real science, join Leah and I over at a real science podcast where two scientists, none of which are a lawyer, talk about actual science. And we're going to talk about, were scientists wrong? Researchers now propose a new eruption date for the Locker Sea volcano. We're going to talk about the carbon-14 deception, bad dating, and just a bunch of gobbledygook, especially the fact that yeah, Ben Davidson over at Suspicious Observers is nothing more than a fear monger trying to take money off a of half a million people by scaring the shit out of them, which that doesn't need to happen. They could learn the facts. There is no galactic super wave coming to kill them. 
And most of what he says is based on fear porn and outdated science fiction and not science fact. But the fact is that an asteroid crater 520 kilometers perhaps in diameter buried deep in the southeast Australian desert is a new boom. In fact, the biggest crater ever found. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow over at revolution.radio, 12 noon mountain time. Now, have you heard the most intensive ivermectin use had a 74% reduction in excess deaths in Peru. Who knew? Now you do, according to a new study. Ivermectin is not horse dewormer. It's used all around the world, one of the most approved medications by all of the big dumps. It's being used to prevent malaria and other forms of infection, and it showed a 74% reduction in excess deaths in Peru alone. I wonder why they didn't let you have it here in the U.S. Because they want you dead. We want you alive and save the date. Please come to the Crestone Energy Fair, September 16th and 17th, 2023 this year. There will be one trillion people all... Whew, man, it's going to be big. I hope you have a campsite be there or be square. Lee and I will be speaking Saturday and Sunday. Bringing the soil back to life. How to build a Johnson Sioux bioreactor by me on Saturday and Sunday. Lee and I will be talking about reclaiming your sovereignty. How to become more self-sufficient. Will you be there? I hope so. And that's a boom to knowledge. Crestone Energy Fair 2024. The 34th annual boom in the desert. Be there, be square. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We are shadow banned, so we need you to share this video now for our safety. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. We love you. Be safe. And that is a boom. Boom.